Russia is announcing this morning it will take action against the UK by expelling 23 British embassy staff from Moscow. It is just the latest move in an escalating dispute between the two countries, triggered by the killing of a former Russian spy in Britain. Elizabeth Palmer has more from Moscow this morning. Liz, good morning. Good morning. High-level diplomatic rifts follow a predictable pattern, and this one is no different. Everybody knew this was coming. It was just a question of when. Um, I just had a meeting um, in the Russian Late ministry. this morning, Foreign Britain's Affairs. ambassador to Russia, Laurie yeah, Bristow, Foreign was summoned to the Foreign Ministry. Russia today has informed me of the steps that Russia will be taking. Starting with the expulsion of 23 British diplomatic personnel from Russia. It's a tit-for-tat move that mirrors Britain's expulsion last week of 23 Russian diplomats from the UK after the British government accused Moscow of poisoning the Russian exile Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Yulia, with a nerve agent. This crisis has arisen um, as a result of um, an appalling attack in the United Kingdom, the attempted murder of two people using a chemical weapon developed in Russia. The in London, Britain's government. foreign secretary went even Russia. further, pointing the finger directly at Russia's president. Our quarrel is with Putin's Kremlin and with his decision. And we think it overwhelmingly likely that it was his decision to direct the use of a nerve agent on the streets of of the UK. Skripal's poisoning has forced the police to re-examine the cases of several Russians who died or fell ill on UK soil. Amid criticism that Britain's government at the time shut down the original investigations for political reasons. And in what seems like a strange coincidence, police now say Nikolai Glushkov, a former Russian businessman, was murdered last week outside London, though they say there's no link to the Skripal poisoning. But for obvious reasons, Russian dissidents in London are spooked. It does look as if relations between Russia and the UK and the UK's allies, including the US, are going to get even worse. So this is a bad time for the thinning of the diplomatic ranks, just as they may most be needed to defuse the situation. Anthony? Elizabeth Palmer in Moscow. Thanks, Liz. Joining me live to discuss the issue is Russia's permanent representative to the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons and also the Ambassador to the Netherlands. Delighted to say Alexander Shulgin's with us. Just uh, uh, also note to say this is going to be dual translated for you at home so you understand uh, do you think sir thanks for your time by the way do you think sir, the only reason the UK is denying Russia a sample of the chemical at the moment is because it sees Russia as the main suspect It's hard for me to say anything definite about this, because here in The Hague we don't have the direct dialogue with our British counterparts on this issue. We only have indirect contacts at the plenary session of the Executive Council of our organization. We came up with a proposal about bilateral consultations. They refused. And indeed, they refused to provide us with any samples. Apparently, based on the statements by the head of the British delegation, they regard our proposal on uh, bilateral consultations as an attempt to procrastinate, and they urged everybody not to listen to these lies, as they say. Uh, they say Russia's intention is to avoid being held accountable. But I have a different guess. My guess is actually our British friends and partners are just afraid. They're afraid uh, that our experts may analyze those samples and uh, they may see some dirty tricks there or something. So our British partners don't want this to happen, uh, especially since we warn them that we are ready for a thorough dialogue. But as long as uh, the British substantiate their claims, their accusations with substantive evidence, otherwise, if they don't produce any evidence, we warn them, we will 
Uh, regard that they have nothing to show and then they will be held accountable for slander. But, sir, there is, a, there is a convention here, isn't there, that everyone should abide by. Sergei Lavrov says the UK has breached the Convention on Chemical Weapons. Is London actually obliged to cooperate with Moscow? Even if it sees it as a suspect or not, it's got an obligation, has it not? According to the Convention, Article 9, in case a state which is a party to the Convention has any issues with respect to another party, like the UK in this particular case, Russia has certain questions for the UK, uh, this state can ask for bilateral consultations. Russia has to provide uh, the UK with information as soon as possible, within 10 days after an appeal is made. The British, however, don't want to have direct contacts with us. I guess they think it's beneath them to talk to Russians, so they avoid having direct contacts. We offered other options to them. If they don't want to talk to us directly, we can go through the Executive Council. Fine. Uh, send your appeal to the Executive Council, and then the Council will contact us and will give our response within 10 days. And then there's the third option, after all. We can set up a working group of technical experts led by the Director General. And if they're not happy with that, there's still another option. They can call a special session. But the British are not happy with any of those options. They're not happy with our clarifications. They can uh, call a meeting of the highest body of the OPCW, and we can address this issue there. So they have a full set of different options. It's all within the convention. It's perfectly legal. Yet, we don't see any desire on the part of our partners to work along those procedures. Sir, we don't have a lot of time. I'm going to amalgamate a couple of questions. I've got a number of here that I wanted to ask you. I'm going to try and shorten it down a bit. First off, the UK, the UK is claiming that because the uh, USSR in its day developed this weapon, therefore Russia is the most likely culprit. I want to get your answer to that one. And also the creator of Novichok uh, will... Mirzyanov says that indeed he thinks it can only be Russia that is responsible. How would you counter both those allegations? First of all, I categorically deny any speculations about this matter. Russia has nothing to do whatsoever to what happened in Salisbury. As for Novichok, Russia, and I stress, Russia has never had a scientific program with such a code name. Of course, during the Soviet period, uh, research was being done on a new generation of um, chemical weapons. And it was not just the Soviet Union that did that. The United States had similar programs. They worked on VX. And later, now, when the Soviet Union collapsed in the early 90s, intelligence services brought a group of specialists, including the person you mentioned, Vilmir Sayanov, took them outside of Russia, and they took their documents with them, the results of their research, and they continued working abroad. And we believe that they actually continued their research in other other countries and they've achieved certain positive results. And what we are seeing now, we, we can actually find the results of their work in open sources uh, on the website of NATO or the European Union. So we can assume that the source 
the source of the uh, chemical weapon that was used in Salisbury was in one of those countries that continued working on those poisonous substances and achieved success there. That's, of course, all part of the investigation, the ongoing investigation, albeit not uh, uh, the most successful way of going around it, as you see it at the moment. A final thought. London uh, has agreed to share a sample with the OPCW. Um, What's going to happen to your investigation then? Will, will both countries be able to cooperate through the OPCW when that eventually happens in the coming time? Well, first of all, I haven't heard that London has agreed to provide any samples to anybody. I just know that two or three days ago, Theresa May sent a letter to the chief of the technical secretariat at the OPCW asking for technical assistance with an independent test of um, uh, the samples. Well, they're, they're entitled to do so. They're, as a party to the convention, they can ask for such assistance, and then technical secretariat has to provide such assistance to them. As far as I understand, uh, they did not discuss any particular dates, uh, and so far the British just continue with their internal investigation domestically. Then the, perhaps they'll send a mission to the OPCW had, uh, but they will just look at the formula of the substance, identify which category it belongs to, but uh, for so, sure they will not be able to tell where the substance came from. This will require a dialogue between Russia and the United Kingdom. So as it stands at the moment, uh, direct or indirect, there are many different ways to go about it. So as it stands at the moment, as Russia's permanent representative of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, are you saying you are not confident that there's going to be a, a fair and open investigation here? Well, because of the position that uh, the British have taken, they accuse us without any proof, any evidence. They can't produce any evidence. Uh, we can talk directly or indirectly through the Executive Council, but this, these are serious allegations. They accuse us of violating the Chemical Weapons Convention, using chemical weapons for the first time since the end of World War II. These are serious allegations, so they have to substantiate this somehow. It's like, you know, you are being detained on the street by police and you are accused of stealing money from a store, what would be your reaction? You would say, well, show me your evidence. Tell me why. Why do you think I did that? Right? There is no other way. How can you accuse people without producing any evidence? Why do we have to believe the, the, those claims, those things that the British authorities say? Because we know examples from the past when British politicians lied. Do you remember what Tony Blair did when he asked the British to trust him? telling them that there was need to invade Iraq. Do you remember what happened after that? Eventually, Blair had to repent to his uh, fellow citizens. He apologized to the families of the soldiers who were killed there in Iraq. He should have apologized to the Iraqi people who were killed. Tens of thousands of people were killed as a result of this affair. And, in fact, the Americans uh, and the British, they, they say that they're standing, they're, they show solidarity, they will oppose Russian aggression, but they're not frank with each other. They deceive each other as well. I totally take in your point there, our viewers of... Uh, Heard it clearly as well. I'm afraid we're about to lose the line to you if we talk anymore, and I didn't want that to happen. Live from The Hague there, Alexander Shulgin, Russian representative of the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. Thank you for being live Thank on RT International in your time. Thank you.
23 British diplomats are to be expelled from Russia in retaliation to an identical move by the UK over the poisoning of a former double agent in Britain. The British ambassador to Russia was told the news when he was summoned to the foreign ministry. Nadira Tudor sums up what we know. Tensions have been uh, escalating and here we are now. 23 British diplomats are going to be expelled. They've got a week They've been given a week to, to mm. leave. This was told to the uh, UK ambassador who was summoned to the Russian Foreign mm -hmm. Ministry this morning. Um, the, the Russian uh, Foreign Ministry has also said that further measures in retaliation to this growing diplomatic dispute over the nerve agent attack on the former uh, spy in Britain um, will be taken uh, if Britain takes any more unfriendly moves towards Russia. Okay, they've so, left that part open then. Okay. Yeah, they have. Right. So, you know, we have been seeing the rhetoric. Yesterday we saw uh, Sergei Lavrov speak um, quite harshly uh, and Moscow retaliating uh, to that as well. What we also have is uh, Russia's ordering that the consulate, just to explain this, the, mm -hmm. there's a consulate in St. Petersburg and they um, asked or requested an expansion. That has now been refused. Okay. And if we look at the background here, you know, Russia has taken a number of steps when these scripples were poisoned to try and uh, cooperate with the British authorities. They rec requested samples of the nerve agent. Uh, Britain refused to provide them. Russia also said it was willing to help with the investigation. They hadn't heard back from that, so they wanted to cooperate then. Mm. And recently, Moscow um, just launched their own criminal investigation. We don't know when that's going to happen, how that's going to happen, if it's going to happen at all, because, of course, they will need that cooperation from the Brits. That's the situation as it stands yeah. right now. Well, even though the British investigation into the poisoning is still ongoing, UK officials were fast to turn their words into action, as Jacqueline Vuga reports. Issue threats, impose sanctions and cancel your plans to attend the World Cup now. There's no time to explain. Ah, the stuff memes are made of. Literally. Concrete proof? A full and transparent investigation? No time for that. The European Council isn't hanging around. Donald Tusk is calling everyone in to discuss what nobody's certain about. I'm ready to put this issue on the agenda of next week's EU summit. Charging forward on the most likely inspired by Moscow front. No time to be sure. Even Australia is backing Theresa May's compelling case against Russia. Innocent until it gets interesting. Australia stands in solidarity and supports the United Kingdom. And the UK Defence Secretary isn't overly keen on hearing out the defence. Frankly, Russia should go away. It should shut up. Just after that, Gavin Williamson announced £48 million will be invested in a new chemical weapons defence centre. Why? Because Russia, of course. The Defence Secretary is also going to deliver with anthrax vaccines for troops. What does that have to do with the Skripal poisoning? No time to explain. And it took France no time at all to change its mind on action. Initially sceptical and calling it too soon to blame the Kremlin, Paris is set to agree on and impose new sanctions on Russia. Et je veux ici avoir euh, évidemment un mot de solidarité pour euh, nos amis britanniques. So the plan is solidarity with the UK, which apparently includes deliberately avoiding a Russian stand at the Paris Book Fair. What we are seeing is a whole lot of act first and ask later. And frankly, we should take more time to find the answers.